of ironic to say, you know, anything essential is invisible to the eye, and yet we're trying to make a movie about that idea. If you please draw me a sheet. So the biggest challenge is really finding a story that will utilize the book and create sort of a, a structure so that the book can be at the heart of, of a larger story. Ah! That's just the beginning of the story. Mark had, a, had an idea to illustrate the book in stop motion and wrap that section with the CG part of the film. This different medium representing uh, the little girl's imagination and it's incredible. trying to create a world that feels like a very realistic storybook. And CG is really a fantastic tool to do that. The big thing is being able to see the clear kind of divisions between the different worlds. The warmth of the aviator and the little prince's world, and then the real world, strict, more formal. The little girl is interesting in that she be begins as a very sort of dour, serious character. and finds the child in herself. So I knew my design had to be able to carry that range of emotions. She had to be able to transform from the beginning of the film. Unlike the little girl, the aviator is a child in an old man's body. Grant! All these characters are very iconic in the way they're presented. It's also a way for us to create this fairy tale, this storybook universe that um, should feel very unique and should feel like it's in keeping with the, the book. kind of triggers in your brain when you look at stop motion, it makes you believe like it's a fantasy. That's why stop motion becomes the perfect medium to translate the, the passages of the book. We wanted to work with paper because the stop motion part of this story is all about the book. Uh, Exupery's illustrations are so simple and naive that it was really important to take those bits and interpret them in, in sculpturally in a way that, uh, that still felt like illustrations. We go from a sequence that is entirely made up of paper at the beginning and then it becomes uh, more dimensional, but we still keep a lot of the paper feeling. We're going through a lot of trouble to sculpt the heads out of a paper clay, but uh, it allows Alex and his team to lay down like a watercolor look on the faces. It is only with the heart that one can see rightly. Stop motion is all about movement, and when you're building armatures for a stop motion puppet, at a very basic level, it's our job to make the animator's job as easy as possible. So the biggest part of stop motion is just making sure that you've kind of just nothing that's not supposed to move is not going to move to make sure your puppets are properly rigged. Generally, you know, we can do a second a day, two seconds. It really depends on the shot and the complexity. Stop motion really evokes those feelings of childhood. And so it's always been a great technique because it really taps into those sort of earlier sort of feelings of being a child. <laughs>